Great. Uh, 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 good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. It's Glenn McKnight, and I'm with my associate, Alfredo Calderon. Uh, we're going to walk through this session today. It's an orientation. So if you don't mind, uh, for the sake of the recording quality, if we can just ask everybody to mute your mic and close your, your video, uh, that would uh, use less bandwidth. And uh, uh, please go ahead and, and we're not trying to censor you, but if you can, if something's not clear, uh, please take a, uh, use of the chat box, which myself and Alfredo will look uh, and, and try to answer the questions immediately for you. And then at the end, we can open up the mics and, and take questions. So uh, that's just a few housekeeping rules. And we'll try to follow the same procedure for um, subsequent sessions as well. OK, thank you so much. Uh, on to the next slide. OK, so our purpose, this is a voluntary uh, set of live sessions. We understand all of you are adults. Um, Many of you have careers, so it's in the middle of your work day, or you're trying to get your family set up in the evening or whatever. So we understand that you're in the depths of, of other activities and, and thank you for joining us for VSIG. And we understand that this is part of your own lifelong learning. And we understand that uh, you're, um, you chair, we do appreciate uh, your involvement and uh, we understand that a number of people are not on this call, even though we have roughly 45 people registered for this program. Uh, many people don't always attend the live sessions, but it's an opportunity for you to express your views. And, and again, if you are in a situation where life gets in the way, uh, we, as you notice at the very beginning, we record the session and that session is then added to a playlist and then it's available for you to see. So as you see in the second thing, uh, all the live sessions are recorded. Now, this is an incredible tool and Stacy can appreciate this being from Australia. This is a, a MOOC that um, has bundled with it, something called Big Blue Button. And, and for uh, many of our sessions up to recently, we would use this Big Blue Button uh, live chat uh, protocol for our live sessions, but we've migrated, as you know, uh, to Zoom. So uh, we've been finding this is a little bit more convenient. We purchased a, a professional uh, version of Zoom and it seems to be working fairly well. Uh, there was issues with the big blue button in terms of uh, unnecessary additional work that Alfredo had to do in terms of converting the video so that we can actually uh, see it. So, um, so, don't, don't bother with the big blue button thing, expression there. And that's just historical information. So within, uh, and historically it would be 12 to 24 hours, we would convert the videos. We don't really have to do that anymore, but uh, as soon as the recording is available, uh, myself or, or Alfredo will convert it and up it goes into the site. Um, okay, so let's go on to the, uh, uh, session. Uh, so I'm on the right and Alfredo's on the left. So Alfredo Calderon uh, is here as well and myself and we'll try to give you a, an over, uh, overview orientation. Uh, Alfredo, anything you want to say? No, I just uh, wanted uh, to mention to all that in the previous slide uh, we mentioned that uh, there's a short survey for each one of the live sessions. So keep that in mind and we'll remind it again at the end. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah, and, and thank you for mentioning that. Um, uh, the Every single session, we need your opinion on whether that person was a good speaker. If, if it's overwhelming interest and in, say that person was great, it's going to be beneficial for the next group. Uh, if it's overwhelming that the person uh, wasn't so great, uh, it, it does shape our opinion on, on in finding, uh, finding people. In the next group, group H, we're experimenting with uh, an idea with some people that are doing PhD papers, uh, doing some research, and we're gonna be looking at, at some doctorate students actually presenting some of their research. I had a meeting with a lady today from Pakistan who does 
some very advanced security issues. And, and I'm working with her as one of our speakers in Group H in, in uh, January. Okay, uh, I believe there's a comment in the chat uh, from Stacy uh, mentioning that we may try using uh, other AI to transcribe notes from these calls. I was planning to do that around our time. Thank you. Uh, great, Stacy. We'll, we'll follow up on that. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, and I think it's really important in terms of the, um, the sponsorship and, and our sponsorships, starting with the top level sponsorship is RIPE, NCC, that's the RAR uh, based in uh, Amsterdam in, in uh, Europe and PIR, Public Interest Registry. Those two are the top level of our sponsors. Nexus.PR uh, from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, VeriSign and Aaron, they're the next level of gold sponsors. And then Identi uh, Identity Digital, formerly known as uh, Donuts, and, and formerly before that, known as Affilius. Uh, and all, all these people to this point have been with us from the very beginning. Uh, Sarah is the Canadian uh, CTDLD. Uh, in fact, I saw them today, actually, uh, the people with, with Sarah. Afrinec uh, has been in. In particular, they have been uh, largely responsible in supporting uh, the hiring of our French translators to uh, create our French version of the course. ICANN has been with us and GoDaddy. Uh, next slide, please. And I just want to mention on the sponsorship, uh, we go the sponsorship model so that we can keep this course free. And, and I think that's, that's really quite important. So I think it's important to give you a little bit of background uh, why we created VSIG in the first place, who was involved, what are the features and the benefits of, of this MOOC, well, what are the immediate outcomes for current student cohorts, some housekeeping stuff, and we're gonna go live uh, into the program itself and, and do a, a quick walkthrough. Next slide. Everybody can hear me okay, right? Uh, I'm not, uh, my audio is not cutting out? No, it's not good. Okay, great. Okay, I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that my internet to my room doesn't drop again. Okay, so what, why VSIG? Why, why the Virtual School of Internet Governance? Well, we, we conceptualized this model of training as a, probably one of the most comprehensive free online trainings focused on internet governance. And it was an opportunity for anyone and also from anywhere. Uh, so that was an important element of, of what we considered in this. A, a, that it's free. And second of all, that it's multilingual, which it's in three languages right now, hopefully many more. But we wanted to be um, have a program that if somebody had slower internet access or, or whatever part platform they were, that the design of the program and the tools we used that would take the, all this into consideration. So, um, and I wanna emphasize the word comprehensive because uh, when you get into it, some of the material could be extremely uh, in depth and, and some may be uh, far underwhelming uh, for you. It really depends on your, your perspective. What, what is important is the core modules are consistent to other groups that are involved with internet governance like Diplo or Internet Society or others. Uh, we, we are basically following the same kind of pillars or uh, chapters or modules that anyone that teaches internet governance follows the same thing. Where I think we're unique is we try to constantly uh, do, which I state here, uh, continuous improvement. And that involves finding as much material as possible and integrating it into the course. And, and one of the ways we do that is converting books into EPUB. And, and that makes it, make it, makes it really quite convenient for you to do it. Um, a key element of this MOOC is an interactive experience. Uh, we absolutely believe that this course does not replace any face-to-face -face experience that you'll find 
uh, going to an actual school of internet governance, like the one we're doing in uh, San Juan in November, which will be, I believe is our fourth or fifth uh, program, but it's actually our third face-to-face -face because COVID for the last two years has made us uh, not, not be able to do it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we actually created VSIG is because the opportunity that COVID gave us, kind of a sad opportunity, but we wanted to be committed to do the online training. And the best way that we could do that is in the face of the, the pandemic, we actually put our shoulders to the wheel and, and created this program. Uh, and, and again, the last bullet is a source for entry level education for the IG professional. It's probably a little bit more than your, your entry level, given the depth of the material that has been collated by us. But I think anyone who is looking at uh, becoming an IG professional, this gives you a really good grounding uh, level set to decide which area you would like to specialize in. Uh, so, Alfredo, anything? It, Go ahead. Yeah, if I may emphasize that the, the virtual school VSIC uh, isn't going to disappear. We are going to be a permanent platform for anybody interested in, in learning about internet governance. So, so keep that in mind. And again, we're not going to be replacing any type of face-to-face -face encounter or meetings that have been going on and will uh, increase as the pandemia is, is, uh, it goes away. So, so, so you'll have an opportunity to, to grasp the basic concepts of internet governance in preparation for your face-to-face -face, uh, encounters in the, in the future. Go ahead, Glenn. Great, great, thank you. And it's, it's interesting. I was listening to the feedback for the students for the AP SIG that in Singapore yesterday, and, and it sort of made me reflect Oh, uh, myself and Stacy were involved way back in 2004 at WESAS, and and uh, and consequent to that, many many uh, uh, things that I've had to put my commitment to, whether IEEE or being on the board of ISOC or or being involved for numerous years with ICANN, but there was no such thing as as schools of internet governance or, for that matter, VSIG. So I think we've well, uh, the, the, the ecosystem is a lot better than it used to be. And um, so, which is, which is pretty good. Uh, I, think, uh, I think there's a time and a place and we're happy to work with any school uh, that if they would like to have our program uh, integrated with their particular school for a program. And I did have, have meetings to, with a couple of universities uh, this week already on that issue. So let's move on to the slide. Okay, go ahead, introduce yourself, Alfredo. So, so hi, uh, I'm Alfredo Calderon and I'm the uh, academic uh, coordinator or director. So I, I basically uh, guide the, the, the format we have in, in the platform and the content is, is reviewed by myself and, and by Glenn. And uh, we have an advisory council that also helps us out on that. And of course, all of you uh, do that as well as you will see through uh, the different modules and, and comments we're going to be making. Uh, Glenn? Uh, you know, we forgot, uh, we forgot very important people. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we do have two assistants. We have our French coordinator, which is Cindy Oved from Haiti. And we, uh, Ben uh, Rashad Sanusi from Benin. But we also have uh, Lillian. Uh, Lillian is based from Colombia, and she works very closely with Alfredo on this delivery of the, the Spanish program. And, and as uh, time goes on, we'll be working with Andre uh, with our uh, delivery of our Russian program. Uh, we've had other discussions with, with potential for uh, Bengala, uh, for the language that's West, West Bengal, as well as Chinese, but those are definitely down the line. But we wanted you to understand that uh, even though that Alfredo and I were, uh, I guess, the inspiration to create this, but it's grown much, much larger in terms of asking people from uh, the wider community for feedback, which every single session we have uh, a survey to give 
access. And in fact, uh, if you recall, Alfredo, uh, the very first group gave us a recommendation to create a new module on artificial intelligence, on, 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 on blockchain and uh, IoT. So we created the emergent technology module as a result of feedback from the participants in the program. Okay, next, next slide. Oh, I, you know what? Sorry, folks, a uh, little bit of introduction. Um, on the other hand, uh, even though that Alfredo is the key academic person and, and the person who's a, a design specialist in, in using the mode, uh, I do a lot of other tasks and supporting Alfredo and, and chasing, uh, chasing uh, uh, opportunities as well as others. But uh, we, we make a, a really good dance partners. So uh, maybe the, you can walk through this slide. Over sure, over. sure. Uh, uh, so, so that you can understand some of the features that we have in the platform we're using. As most of you might know, we're using Moodle. Uh, there's different versions of Moodle. The one we're using is a licensed one. And again, uh, we want to thank our sponsors because they are the ones that help us maintain this up and running, uh, paying for the license and free for all the, the fellows that are participating. Uh, the platform allows us to have sort of a, a rich environment. And as Glenn mentioned, we have uh, different papers in ebook format. We have videos, we have link, links to websites and uh, different uh, organizations that you'll see as you walk through the different modules. Uh, it's mobile friendly, and that's important to us because, as Glenn mentioned, we want those that have a difficulty uh, with uh, internet connectivity, they can download the content, review it in their devices, and if they are doing the quizzes for the certificate, they'll be able to synchronize their uh, performance offline once they uh, sync with a Wi-Fi connection again and uh, it adapts to different platforms as well. Uh, the management system, which I'm the, the person in charge of, is user-friendly. If some of you have used uh, Moodle from the admin point of view, it's quite easy uh, to understand and to, to use eventually. Uh, and as I mentioned, we have offline uh, learning because you can download the content of each one of the modules and we encourage you, and I want to emphasize this, we encourage you as soon as you start looking at the modules, if you have or you see any resources that you would like to have available, uh, you can download them and have them available for you after we finish uh, the course. Uh, and I say this because after we finish with, with you uh, in November 28 or 30, uh, you won't have access to the material again. So keep that in mind as you move forward and you review the content. If you find something interesting, download it, uh, copy it. Uh, we're using a creative, uh, a, com a creative Commons license. So everything that we're using is available for free. Uh, and if we have something that has uh, copyrights, uh, we mentioned that as well in the content as we uh, go through it. We have live chat and live sessions. Uh, this is an example of one of those live sessions. We have one every week. And as Glenn uh, mentioned, instead of using a uh, big blue button, we're using Zoom. And that's why you have to uh, log in, uh, register for each one of the sessions. So we have sort of a record of who's uh, accessing the live sessions and through YouTube, we'll see who's reviewing the videos as well. Uh, we have discussion forums. Uh, some of you have already uh, used the discussion forum to introduce yourself. Keep in mind that we want to know each and every one of you. And this is because we want you to get to know if within the group, there's somebody that is doing a project that you might be interested in developing in your part of the world and you don't have the slightest idea of how to do it. So this is a great opportunity through the discussion forums to interact, to connect, to uh, have some networking done. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to introduce yourself. 
So please, for those that haven't done so, those that are watching this recording, please go into the first module, which is the introduction module, and introduce yourself to the rest of the classmates. Uh, we have quizzes. Uh, the quizzes are just to help you, to guide you through some key issues that we want you to have to have so some sort of knowledge and be aware of. Uh, and if you're seeking the certificate of completion, it is important that you complete all the quizzes. You can take them as many times as you need to, uh, but you have to get at least an 80% in each one of them. Not as a total, but in each one of them so that at the end you will see the certificate of completion, which I will show you when we do the live walkthrough. Uh, Glenn, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's important everybody to realize that we understand everybody has busy lives. Not only that, maybe online learning is not for you. Uh, some of you may be very interested in certificates of, of completion. Uh, some people could care less about it. Uh, you know, and, and some people come back to us and say, well, if you charged money uh, for this course, uh, people would value it more. No, we, we don't adhere to that philosophy. I think people, um, you know, they, they get involved with our program. Uh, some really do value to get the certificate. And it's a cultural thing, too. It's like in, in, in Africa and in, in, in particularly in India, uh, getting the certificate of completion is a is a, a relatively high priority. Not so much in, in North America, for example, and it may in some of your countries uh, may may be important, may not be. But we we do empathize. We don't get our nose out of joint that that you don't uh, finish it. But we do have a an idea, uh, and we try to encourage people if they don't sign in. And this has happened sometimes. People are very keen on signing up for the course and we never see them. So we do poke them a couple of times saying, hey, you know, you took a spot that someone else took. And we have to emphasize this. Our license is not infinite number. So we have three programs running. So which makes us limit on the number of students in, in a particular program for, for a period of time. Uh, I know some schools like uh, University of Phoenix and others uh, have thousands of students, but that's uh, you pay thousands of dollars for that course, right? Uh, so so there, there's dynamics here. I uh, just have to understand our, where we're coming from. Um, and I think it's working really well. I, uh, I talk to Alfredo on a daily basis. Uh, he's got a new group C in Spanish. Absolutely amazing. The, this group of students have, have gotten such, they got a fire in their belly. And, and, and he tells me every time I talk to him and because and, the recordings are every week, the turnout is phenomenal. And, and the sessions are really quite substantial and it's, it's working really well. So I'm, I'm hoping the same kind of dynamism will be with this group as well. Yeah, and I yeah, and I would like to mention as well. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for for mentioning the Spanish course, uh, which we started in last month in in, in August. Uh, uh, so we're halfway through it. Uh, but at some points during uh, the this uh, this quarter, we're having three different courses running at the same time. So we have three different live sessions uh, on week on a weekly basis. So that gives you an idea of the complexity of what we as uh, as staff uh, are doing uh, uh, every week. Uh, the other thing is that we want to encourage discussion. So take advantage of the, uh, the discussion threads. We're going to post some key questions. We expect you to interact, to give us your feedback so that we can have a, a lively conversation every every week so so keep that in mind as we move forward great thank you okay here's the famous uh, certificate of completion and your name would be there uh and and again that's important too uh if if there's a spelling error uh, uh go in when you 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 go into your profile and and uh alfredo will be talking about that in a second so the certificate will be kicked out by the system based on the name that was provided. So uh, that's really important. 
that uh, that's accurate. Yes, and, and besides that, on the top right side, there'll be a unique identifier, which will give us the advantage uh, to go back into the database in the future. And if somebody requests it, requests some evidence that you have actually gone through the course, we'll be able to, to track that in the database. So, so be aware of that. Make sure that your name is, is written correctly. And if it's not, I'll show you where you can uh, do the, the updates. Okay. Now, uh, for those of you that uh, want to download the Moodle app, if you're aware of it or if you're not aware of it, uh, on the left side, you can see that you have to go to download.moodle.org slash mobile. And it's available for uh, Apple devices. And it's also available for Android devices, including tablets and cell phones. Uh, and once you download the application and you run it, it'll ask you for the URL of the uh, platform where the course is. And you can see it right there. It's HTTPS and just write that in. And then you use your username and your password. If you change your password, remember the latest password you've used. If you forget your password, there's a way you can gain access to the password as long as your uh, email address is correct in the system as well. So this is important for those that have connectivity issues. You can download the app and you'll have access to all the content. And I'll show you that when we do uh, uh, some other slides uh, further down the road. Uh, this, this gives you an idea of how it looks in your mobile device. If you're using the, move, uh, the mobile app, on the left, you'll see the uh, portion of the introduction to one of the modules. In the middle, you'll see the actual model module with some of the information. The links are live, so they work as when you click on them, they'll take you to the actual page. Uh, and on the right side, you see the sort of the icons that are used to identify each one of the different tools we're using within the course. Uh, for those that were using or had a, a previous version of, of Moodle, they were different. So they have been updated in the latest version. So these are the examples. Uh, there's a participant guide that you all should have uh, read and should have downloaded if you want to have it as a reference. Make sure that you click on Mark as done on that participant guidebook. That is one of the requirements in order to get the certificate. Please, I want to emphasize, review the participant guidebook. If you want to download it, download it. It explains all the icons and the dynamics of the whole course. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, this gives you an illustration of how it looks if you're using a tablet. I use an iPad, and when I'm using the iPad, the navigation tools are on the left, and you'll see the content in the middle. And on the top, you'll see uh, some tabs that will help you navigate uh, if you want to uh, gain access to some of the other sections of the course. This gives you a view of how it looks in the uh, in the tablet, if you're using a tablet. And again, uh, on the right, you sort of see a, a table of content. And this is because we're using the analogy of a book. We have a book within each one of the modules. Uh, the book is designed uh, using chapters and each chapter may, may or may not have different sections. So you can see on the right, that we have uh, the actors uh, module. And for the actors module, I'm sorry if it's in Spanish, uh, I just took a screenshot in Spanish. You'll see that the table of content has, the chapters are, are numbered, and then the sections are uh, numbered as well. And you'll see that uh, sort of structure throughout each one of the, the modules in the book section, which is where we actually have uh, most of the content. Uh, this gives you an idea of a quiz, and as you can see, it's in French because, as Glenn mentioned, we're uh, starting a group B in French uh, 
actually this Wednesday, we're having the orientation session in French. And this is sort of a, a display of a, a sample question that you'll see within the course. You'll see questions in different formats for the quizzes. You'll see true and false questions. You'll see multiple choice questions. You'll see click and drag questions. And you'll also see uh, matching questions. So there's a lot of different type of questions. Uh, and again, the idea is to make sure or ensure that you grasp the basic concepts in the, uh, from each one of the modules. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, it helps us out to see if you understand the basic information that we want to share with, with all of you. Uh, well, what, what are the basic benefits that we see uh, through using this platform and the tools we're using? Uh, basically, we want to engage you uh, in a clear educational roadmap for internet governance. Uh, I, as a fellow, I was a fellow in the ICANN program. I've been involved with ICANN Learn. I've, I've been involved with ISOC Learn. Um, I've been a, a, an evaluator of content. I'm an instructional designer as well, besides being a, a, a chemistry professor at the university level. So I have a sort of an idea of what, what should be involved in, in this uh, roadmap to understand internet governance. And again, uh, and it's great to see that we have an ICANN 75 fellow. We just want to engage you and make sure that you have a, the basic concepts to learn more about internet governance. We're not trying to teach everything there is because as some of you know, internet governance is an evolving uh, environment. So every day there's new things that we try to incorporate based on uh, re uh, regulations, norms, policies that are being implemented uh, around the world. Uh, it's a learning environment, the platform we're using where we want to share knowledge and experiences. So networking is key for us and we want you as participants to share with us your knowledge, uh, your experiences. And if you have any kind of resources that you feel that are worthwhile uh, sharing with the rest of the uh, for the group, uh, we have uh, 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 ways to do that, and we'll talk about that in in a second. There is a sort of a a form that you can fill out with information, so we can give you credit eventually when we publish that resource that you're sharing with us. And you can also use the discussion uh, threads in in the different modules to to write your comments and share some uh, additional information. And again, we want this to be interactive. Uh, we have different forms that you can uh, communicate with us. They can either be synchronous uh, or they can be asynchronous. We have the discussions, we have the chats, we have the live sessions. So, so please uh, take advantage of all the tools we have here for you as uh, students uh, to, to learn uh, the basics. Uh, Glenn, anything to add? Yeah, I, I think uh, you've done a great job in, in terms of, um, of doing this. And, and I think we, we keep referring to the platform and, and I, I believe, and I think I'll have to share some of the research, but Moodle has really become the, the, the industry standard in terms of, and, it's, and that in itself keeps us on our toes because every time there's an update, we have to adjust accordingly as well but it, it has become a fantastic program to allow us to, to work very collaboratively with, uh, with, with organizations and uh, it's worked well. And, and we're looking forward to other, I started to work on a cybersecurity course over the summer and I just got bogged down with other things, but it's stuff that we'll be looking at in the future. We're gonna do a big revision in, in the summer uh, it probably got a lot of the course and, and re, re, re examine the, um, the quizzes and stuff. So it's, it's, again, it's a continuous quality improvement approach. Back to you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what are we expecting from you, the, the participants in the course? 
uh, we expect. I mean, and as Glenn mentioned, we know that you're, you have other stuff to take care of. You have other business, you have family and so forth. But if, if you're seeking the certificate, these are, these are the things that we expect from you uh, to go through all the modules. And again, if you have any uh, resources you want to share, any comments, any new modules that you would like to see, we would like to have uh, your feedback on that. We expect you to do the quizzes. The quizzes, as I mentioned, are uh, 10 quizzes, uh, starting with the uh, first module, which is the history of internet governance. Uh, and get 80% at least in each one of them. Uh, and we want you to participate in the live sessions. And even if you don't participate in the live session uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, please go to the survey and, and here's the link so you can answer that survey uh, of satisfaction for each one of the sessions. Uh, we also have a full evaluation survey, which is at the end in the last module in the emerging technology module. And uh, I'll show that to you when we go to the live uh, walkthrough so you can have an idea of what's happening there. Glenn, anything to add here? No. Okay, so let's uh, talk about some housekeeping that's important that uh, some of you do. Uh, on the top right side of the course, once you access the course, You'll see that it has your name and you can add your, your photo if you want to. There's a sort of a tick there. If you click on it, you'll see another menu. And in that menu, there's an option that reads profile. I would like that everyone accesses their profile. And as you can see on the right side, up on the right side, you have the option to edit your profile. And that's important to us. As Glenn mentioned, if your name is not written correctly, please check your name and your surname, of course. Your email, you'll be able to update that as well. But we also need to know where you're from. So some of you might see that it says San Juan, Puerto Rico. Please, please, please. For example, Stacy, you're from Australia. You're not from San Juan, Puerto Rico. So make sure you update that and write your city, your country, and the time zone. The time zone is important with, because it will reflect in your profile and when you access the course, the time in your time zone in relation to the time zone where the course is being uh, hosted, which is, if I remember correctly, in the United States on the East Coast. So there's a time difference when you go to the actual uh, scheduling within the platform. So make sure you do that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I see that there's some chatting going on. I'm hoping that it, uh, Glenn is reviewing those and answering some questions. Yep, yep. Thank you. So as part of the profile I mentioned, you can uh, up, upload your, your photo. Uh, you can see there's the current uh, picture there, uh, but you can, click on the uh, sort of the uh, page image there and you can upload your, your photo and have it available so that we can see you uh, as we move through the, the course. I mentioned to you that in the introduction module, there is a participant guidebook. As you can see, uh, it's in a PDF format so you can download it and it'll open up in a different window. Once you review it, and this is important because it's one of the requirements for those that are seeking the certificate of completion. You have to mark where it says mark as done. And in a few seconds, actually a couple of seconds, it'll change to done. And that's a criteria that will appear in your profile in your gradebook as met. If you don't click on it and it says done, at the end, you won't see your certificate when you do the uh, quizzes and the other stuff that we are requiring you to do. So keep that in mind as well. And finally, and most of you have already done so, uh, you are suggested, and I'm white, I want to use the word suggested and, and, uh, as, as a kind way to say it, uh, 
to participate in the different discussion uh, topics that we have. And as you have seen, Glenn and I, and some of you have introduced yourself already. So we have an idea of your background, but we need most of you to do that so that we can sort of customize some of the questions we're going to be discussing in the different uh, discussion threads as we move forward. Uh, you have all been, uh, you're here, and those that ha are not here, uh, you know that we're using Zoom instead of Big Blue Button. Each module has a, a Zoom session, which is the live sessions. And if you click on the name of the session, it'll take you to where the actual link to register is. Each live session has a different, and I repeat it, has a different link. And as I said at the beginning, we're using this method because we want to keep this close. We want to keep this within our community and we want to have sort of a record of who's uh, accessing and who's participating. Uh, and again, YouTube is the other tool that we're using to share the, the live sessions with everyone. Uh, there's a required completion questionnaire, which is the one that I mentioned to you that is at in the last module, in the emerging technology modules. Uh, this is the third component or the third leg of completing uh, the course that we want you to be aware of. First, it was the participant guidebook. Second, it's taking each one of the quizzes and getting an 80% in each one of them. And the third and most important element for us is that you complete the final survey. The survey is to give us a whole, an, an overview idea of how you felt taking the course. If you had any concerns that you feel that we should know about, and if you want to share any other resources that you feel that can help us out, uh, improve the course or give us some new ideas. Uh, Glenn mentioned that in the first group we actually had back in 2020, uh, somebody suggested we had a module on emerging technologies and we spent uh, about 10 months creating that module and you are benefiting from that. And uh, keeping, keeping in mind that we're still adding more information in the main content as we move forward in that uh, emerging technology module, but somebody might come up with another module that we feel that we could incorporate in future cohorts. So that's important as well. Now, this uh, image gives you an idea of all the things you have to uh, do in order to get your certificate of completion. First of all, you update your uh, profile information if you're seeking the certificate. So you have the right name written within the certificate. You click on the participant guidebook, which you can see on the right side, it says is, is marked complete. If you click on uh, mark as done, the quizzes, and you'll see the list of all the quizzes. Each module has a quiz. You get 80% of those. And then you have the required completion uh, questionnaire, which is the last activity that you see on the right side in the, uh, on the list that you have to complete. Uh, we encourage you to, you to participate in the discussion threads, and we would like to have you reviewing the live sessions and complete the, the speaker short uh, survey for each one of the sessions. And uh, there's no other thing that you have to do, uh, and you'll immediately see your certificate at the end of completing all these tasks that I have listed on the image. Uh, if I can interrupt for a second, um, Alfredo, I think it's important for everybody to realize there is so much content here. There is so much in the complimentary material. We do not expect you to read it all. We do not expect you to, to uh, read every uh, research paper or YouTube video. We put it there to as a collection. It's a complementary resource, much 
you know, a, a, we will do it every day, as, uh, and er, every, every day of the week, every month of the year, as we find more and more content, we'll put it there. Do not feel pressured that you have to read everything. I, I thought I'd, I'd just mention that because people could, uh, if you're obsessive, you may think you have to read it all. You do not. Yes, please, please keep that in mind. Uh, uh, Glenn and I are, are constantly reviewing stuff, uh, resources. We, we, in some instances, we place them as complementary resources, which I'll show you in a second. And, and others, we uh, mentioned that they are required reading within the main content, but others, it's really up to you. It's basically based on your interest if you want to walk through it. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm in the, uh, the course right now. Well, in the platform, I haven't logged in. I just want to start mentioning a couple of things. Uh, you'll see that you have the capability on the left side uh, to download the Moodle app if you want to directly from here. It will take you to the website where you can download the, uh, the iOS version or the Android version. On the right side, you'll see that uh, in my case, uh, I'm using English uh, as the language for the interface, but you can change that. There's a lot of languages here in which you can uh, have your uh, interface presented, but be aware that if you choose one that you don't understand, you'll run into some difficulties then trying to uh, go back to the original one. So, uh, uh, if we log in, uh, sorry for that. Uh, to log in, uh, you'll see that you have the field where you have to write your username and your password. If you forget, and I mentioned that this at some point, if you forget your password, there is a section here that says or reads lost password. If you click on that, it will ask you for some basic information that only you as the registered participant know to uh, recover your password or to uh, reset your password. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to do that. Otherwise, I'll run into trouble resetting my password, which I have not. So uh, once you log in and this, uh, you'll see that you'll the system will give you a sort of a welcome message with your name. And you will, after that, see the courses you're uh, registered in. In our case, it's Internet Governance Group C, uh, G, and this is the beginning of the course. Uh, let me get rid of this so I can show you how I got here. Uh, I've been doing some work here, so that's why you see the, on the left side the navigation is completely open. And what I'm doing is I'm closing it right now. So if you want to see the details of the course, you go to the button here on the left side that simulates uh, sort of an outline and a bullet design. And you can go into any one of the modules and see the different sections it has. Uh, right now we're in the introduction section uh, here's the participant guidebook. If I click on it, you'll see in the middle that will take you specifically to the participant guidebook. Uh, you can download the file. It's a PDF version seven right now. Uh, I won't click on it because it'll open another window so I can see it and download it. Uh, and uh, remember to click on the mark as done and if you do that, you'll see that it'll change to done immediately. And that's the first requirement that you need in order to uh, get your certificate if you're seeking the certificate. Now, if I go to the second, uh, well, the other thing that I, I should mention is getting to know the participants. If I click on getting to know the participants, it'll take us to the uh, discussion thread. And as you can see, uh, there's a discussion thread, Introduce Yourself, where we have had 45 replies or exchange of information among, amongst the participants. If I click on it, you'll see all the exchanges we've had. It's sort of a long list because everybody is doing their homework. They're introducing themselves. Some are giving more details than others. 
but this is an important element for us in the course. We want everybody to know everybody. And as I mentioned, uh, to be able to do some networking and some collaborative work, if that is the desire of some of you as participant in the course. Uh, now, now the first module where we actually have content is the history of internet governance. If I go into this module, you'll see that it has a short summary of what you can expect. There's a, sh sh a short audio segment as well, uh, which is actually uh, reading the, the, uh, the introduction. Uh, it's a one minute long thing, basically. And then the course, the module has the objectives and you just click on it and it'll take you to the objectives and you'll see some information there as part of that uh, section. If we go into the history of internet governance itself, as I mentioned, it has a book format. So that's why you see the symbol that says uh, a book and on the right side, you see the table of content. If you click on the X on the top right side, you'll see that the table of content disappears. So you'll have more real estate to, to look at the content. But if you want to actually have an, a grasp, an idea of what the content is, you can see the chapters and you can see the sections in, in each one of the chapters. Uh, Glenn, when we started, mentioned WESIS, and if you go into WESIS, yeah, you'll see uh, an overview of what the WESIS is about, and you can use the next or the previous uh, buttons uh, to move through the content of that uh, chapter, or you can actually go through the table of content and go to one of the actual uh, sections that you want to review within that uh chapter. And at the bottom, and this is something that I would like to mention, you'll see that there's some tags there. Uh, these tags will actually uh, go back and give you a reference to all the sections, all the modules where that tag is mentioned. Like for example, if I click on WESIS, it'll take you to all the sections where that is mentioned and you can probably find that there's more areas where you might get more information regarding that specific topic in the course. Now, having said that, each module, History of Internet Governance, for example, also has joined the discussion. And as I mentioned, in the join the discussion, uh, Glenn and I will be launching some key questions so yet that you can uh, give us your input, give us your ideas or your comments based on the content as we go through each one of the modules. The quiz, you have the quiz. Uh, it'll state clearly when each one of the quizzes ends. They all end on November the 28th, which is a Monday. I'm not going to preview the quiz because that's a pri privilege that I have as a admin in the course, but it'll give you an idea of what is the expected grade that you have to get in terms of number. But in terms of percentage, you'll be able to see that uh, if you go into your actual uh, grade book, which I'll show you in a second. An important component of each one of our modules is the complementary resources. Uh, this is something that Glenn also gave you a hint of. We, we don't expect you to go through all these complementary resources that we have here, but you have them available here. Uh, and you'll see that there's a lot of resources here. You'll actually see that we have some original uh, YouTube videos. We have original uh, creative common or open source resources that you can use as part of, of, of the, uh, the module. And it's interesting to mention that some of the uh, fathers of the internet have been a part of our 
our live sessions. We've already have had uh, Vince Surf. We had Steve Crocker. And this group will be privileged to have Bob Kahn, which is considered one of the other uh, founders or fathers of the, of the internet. Uh, so that's also going to, uh, to happen as a highlight to this course. Uh, now, I'm going to go to the last module. The last module is uh, Emergent Technologies. And as we've been mentioning, this was a result of some comments from the first group that we had of participants uh, in this uh, virtual uh, course. And as you can see on the right side, we have different uh, sections or chapters. We have artificial intelligence, blockchain, internet of things, 5G, nanotechnology, and we are actually working now on e the metaverse, which some of you may recognize as the new trend in emerging technologies, although it's not that, that new. It, it had a different name before. Uh, Zuckerberg uh, from Meta, from Facebook, has uh, used uh, that term uh, in Facebook, and that's uh, the new thing that we're talking about. And we're going to see the impact that all these emerging technologies have in internet governance. Keeping in mind, and this is important, the emerging technology module is sort of a an application of what has happened in internet governance and the impact that these emerging technologies have had. And you'll see that we are going to give a lot of references to previous modules because we have been discussing different uh, policies, regulations and norms and the impact uh, in geopolitics and, and so forth. So that's important for all of you to keep in mind as we uh, go through the course. And you can see that at the end within this module that is what we call the required completion questionnaire. And this is a survey that covers the whole activities during the course. And we want you to answer and give us uh, you know, adequate feedback regarding how you felt with the course. Once you complete this uh, required survey, you'll be able to see your certificate. Immediately, it will come up here and you can click on it and you will be able to see it. Uh, since no, no one has done it yet, uh, you won't be able to see it, but oh, but two, oh, let's see. Uh, if we can see his certificate, so we can actually see one. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in your screens. Uh, let's see if it comes up. Uh, there, no, this is mine. Uh, yeah, so this is a certificate that gives your name, as you can see in the center here. It says when you, the, the date when you completed the course, and as I mentioned, at the top right corner, it has a unique identifier. That unique identifier will help us go back to the database in the future and certify that somebody completed the, uh, the course and got the certificate. Uh, so having said that, Glenn, if I'm missing something, let us know or we'll go back to the uh, presentation. No, I think you did a great job. Um... So we can uh, go fairly quickly. We just want to give you an uh, uh, update as we move past this. So now you've, you've had a chance to see. Uh, well, uh, I... The screen that we're showing you right, the uh, sections. Go ahead, Alfredo. Yes. Uh, no, no, I, we lost you there for a second, but go ahead. Yeah, so just a very quick overview. We're starting with the orientation, moving through uh, each of the modules to the last module on November 21st. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we mentioned Dr. Robert Kahn or Bob Kahn. He's one of the three amigos in, in creating the internet. He'll be our history. Uh, and again, we, we strive to get the personal story, uh, not everything about the history of, of, of the internet, 
but to get uh, Bob's uh, uh, viewpoint, where was he at, at the time? <coughs> it's his creation and, and asking him <coughs> what is his views on the future is. Uh, next slide, that's on September 19th. Uh, Ram uh, Mohan, he's the VP of, of Adani's um, uh, uh, former uh, affiliates for uh, Donuts. Uh, he'll be speaking on actors. He was uh, an ICANN board member before. Uh, next slide. Uh, Bob Frankston, kind of interesting person. Um, if, uh, one, if you look him up on his uh, the wiki, uh, he was creator of VisiCal, so which is a killer app, uh, which was essential in terms of the rollout of personal computing. So his personal story and, and perspective is going to be very interesting <clears throat> during the infrastructure section. Next slide. Uh, Mark will, this is going to be a recording. Mark's got a travel on October 10th, so, um, unless we get uh, an alternative to Mark and I'm working on that, but Mark just said we'll work out a, a, a recording date for this session. Uh, Mark used to be with Sira. Next slide. Uh, uh, Dr. Teresa uh, Horazagova uh, used to be with Diplo, now is with GCFB, uh, the Global Cyber uh, Forum uh, Expertise uh, Group based in Amsterdam, uh, so doing, and, and security issues. Next uh, slide. Uh, Andre Reynosa uh, used to be the, I think she used to be the chair of CCNSO at ICANN, correct, uh, Alberto? She's uh, the actual she, chair. Oh, she's still the chair. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so she has spoken in Spanish on this legal topic. Uh, she's uh, thankfully uh, coming in and doing it in English for, for our group. Next slide. Uh, Tim Smith. Very interesting. Uh, has been uh, uh, working with in terms of online staying concept from an entrepreneurial point opportunities. So he'll be going into depth on, on uh, an interesting uh, discussion from the economic perspective. Next one. Uh, and our, our guest who's with us today as well, uh, uh, a while back, I can't remember if it was, if it was A or B, uh, but she's been one of the four leaders um, in, on human rights issues, and we're very fortunate to have, have June for the session. That will be on November 7th. Next slide. And uh, this will be a recording as well. It's gonna, I talked to Ganella today. She's with me at the Singapore AP SIG. Uh, we're gonna do it together with her and Mohammed, uh, who is um, a board member with ISOC and he uh, is legally blind. So we're going to do a three-way discussion about uh, accessibility for people that have disabilities. So this will be a, a, a very in-depth discussion on what uh, both of them uh, are doing in, or, in order to encourage uh, more accessibility for people with disabilities. Next slide. Uh, Tom Barrett uh, has been a big supporter of not only us, but Norello and, and Nasig. Uh, his firm, Encarta, uh, has been very big on, on NFTs and, and blockchain. Uh, I think you'll be very well uh, informed about this topic with Tom. Uh, it's, he's, uh, he's done a similar session for us in the past, for not for Visig, but others. And I think it'll be a, a great conclusion of our speaker list. Okay, and that's it. That wraps up the, the list. So we just want to say to you that I, I need to say this expression, uh, and it's attributed to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you can please 
uh, some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time, but you can't please everybody or all the people all the time. So, but some of you may be uh, very pleased with the course, that's great. Some of you may not be that pleased because it's maybe too complex or too uh, simple. Uh, so just bear in mind, we try to get uh, a happy medium to try to please as many people as possible. But as, as nature works, sometimes you, you can please some of the people, but not all the people. So uh, bear that in mind. Uh, next slide. So I think we, we ran out of time actually. Uh, uh, we went a little longer, which I think was quite elaborate, but uh, Alfredo, do we have? We don't have any questions in, in the chat, uh, unless somebody wants to. I don't uh, see anything in the. Neither do I, so I, I'm guessing that everybody is satisfied. And again, if, if you actually do have any questions, remember that you can uh, reach us through our email or you can uh, use the different discussion threads uh, to post your questions. Uh, as a final remark, uh, these are the, the social media networks we have. We have a website. Uh, you can follow us, our, the posts that we uh, publish there. Uh, of course, the, the platform itself for the, the course. Uh, we have a frequently asked questions section within our website. We have a Facebook page that you can follow what we post there. We actually post the, uh, the videos once we have them in the Facebook page as well. And here you have uh, Glenn's email and mine as well. So you can reach us through that as well. Glenn? I think that's it. Uh, uh... Uh, I think, uh, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we'll share the recording to the other people who couldn't make it today. And we look forward to our next session with Dr. Robert Kahn, uh, which will be on history. So uh, look forward to seeing you all on, online and we try to respond as quickly as possible. If we don't have the answer, maybe one of you may have it. So that's the whole idea of, of we're a community together on this. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Have a great day, uh, enjoy your the rest of your day or evening or or night so see you bye thank you